Hi everyone, it's Equinox. Welcome to my latest video. This one on Zero Suit Samus's Nair and how to perform combos with it. Uh, this ended up being a pretty long video, so I'm going to break it up into timestamps and put those in the description. Uh, basically though, the first half is general notes about Nair and how to use it, while the second half is about specific combos that are probably more difficult for newer players to the character, but they range into ones that are recently discovered, so there's something for veterans and older Zero Suit Samus players here as well. I hope you guys can learn plenty of things from this video, and if there's anything that's unclear, please feel free to ask questions in the description, and I will be happy to get to them. So yeah. Zero Suit Samus's Nair begins on frame 10. At that point, it lasts for two frames in front of her, goes away for a couple frames, and then reappears behind her for two frames. It has six frames of landing lag, one, two, three, four, five, six, before she can do anything else after landing. Uh, this makes it extremely safe to throw out or hit shield with, because she can act so quickly after reach hitting the ground, but that assumes that you land as soon as possible after hitting the shield or or before reaching the ground. It has a good amount of range. You can see here uh, where my arm is, is basically in front of Zero, or uh, at the same distance as Zero Suit's face. And the whole distance in front of her is hitbox with no hurtbox, which means it's very disjointed and can outrange a lot of options. Uh, if you hit a shield with a spaced in air, uh, let alone like frame safety, it will be very uncommon for a character to have an out of shield option that reaches uh, Zero Suit's uh, body from that distance. It is an electric property move, uh, which doesn't mean too much, except that it won't do any damage to Olimar's electric Pikmin, and the opponent is frozen for extra long uh, once the move connects with them. That doesn't matter too much in terms of combos, uh, but it does mean that the opponent can input SDI four times before they get launched, and they have plenty of time to react to the fact that they were hit and input their DI. So do not expect to catch an opponent off guard uh, and for them to fail to DI as a result of that. Uh, fortunately, that also means that you have plenty of time to react to the fact that you hit with it. So you don't need to guess as to whether or not you hit the Nair before going for a follow-up. You should be able to react to whether or not the Nair connected. Uh, the move does 8%, so without the short hop multiplier in 1v1s, it'll do 10. With the short hop multiplier and the 1v1 multiplier, it'll do 8.5. Um, that's good damage, especially for a combo starter and especially for a move as safe as Zero Suit's Nair. Uh, the move has low knockback, especially at low percents. You can see he hardly went anywhere. Um, at higher percents, like 90, uh, I would say he still doesn't go very far for 90%, but it will require you to chase him down uh, if you want to get any follow-ups. For a mid-weight, uh, a fresh nair will not cause tumble at 25, but it will cause tumble at 30. Because Zero Suit Samus's Nair is so safe, it sees a lot of use in neutral as a spacing tool to keep the opponent at a distance or to pressure shield. However, if you want to use it to combo, it's usually best to hit as close to them as possible, which makes it less safe. Uh, as close to them as possible and as close to the ground as possible so that you can enter your landing lag quickly and then get moving. Uh, the reason it's best to hit them as close as possible is because that means less distance for you to cover when you are trying to get your follow-up. So uh, you can see if I hit him here, I have much less distance to cover if I want to follow up with a forward air. As opposed to a spaced air, I have to dash for a much longer period of time and then go for my forward air. There are still combos that can be performed from max range, but for the most part, an unspaced Nair will yield the longest window for your follow-ups and make them easier. So how do you actually hit an opponent with Nair if you're trying to use it so unsafely? Well, 
The answer is that you'll need to play a little bit smarter than you might with other characters' combo starters. If you just jump at the opponent, that's easy for them to see coming and block. Uh, some opponents with fast aerials and players with good reaction time can even just hit you out of the air uh, on reaction. Zero Suit's short hop is very high. You can see I'm reaching three units up. Uh, it takes me about 20 frames to reach the top here. And then even if I fast fall perfectly, uh, it takes me about 10 more to get down. So if I'm trying to use a Nair as close to the ground as possible, that's about 30 frames that I'm spending in the air in front of the opponent. So that's plenty of time for them to react. If I do a full hop Nair, then that's about 40 frames. So if you want to actually hit the opponent, uh, you'll have to outsmart them. Uh, you can uh, do a tech chase. Uh, so a tech chase or a ledge trapping. Uh, in a situation where the opponent can't really defend themselves, that's a great situation for a Nair. Maybe like after hitting a paralyzer shot when they're wide open. Uh, if you want to hit them out of neutral though, it's much more difficult. You'll need to make an opening basically. So uh, Zero Suit's got great movement. And this movement doesn't have to be accompanied by attacks. You don't have to mash buttons during her movement. She can just move, and that alone makes her hard enough to hit. Uh, and one of those great movement tools is her jump. So she can empty jump, full hop. These are things that she can do to avoid attacks. So one of the most common ways to land a Nair will be to wait for the opponent to miss a move or throw out a move that you can uh, see coming and then use a jump to avoid it and then swing the Nair on the way down. Um, that's one of the most common, but it's not the only way. Uh, you can just throw out the Nair to outrange options. So uh, because it's so disjointed, you can, if the opponent is using a move with less range, you can just use it outside of the, the distance of the move. And then usually if you're at that much of a distance, then missing it won't put you in too much danger. If you learn to use your movement as a bait to get the opponent to swing and then jump to avoid the attack, you'll see a lot more Nairs hitting than if you just jump at the opponent uh, and without like taking into account their reactions or their defenses. Because Nair has such low landing lag, and because it launches such a short distance at low percents, it's possible to combo nearly any move in Zero Suit's moveset out of a close, uh, well-spaced relative to the ground. In other words, well-executed Nair, especially if it's approaching, so she slides forward during the landing lag. Examples of these include Jab, include Forward Air, include Up Smash, even Forward Smash, although I don't recommend it. If the opponent is too far away for these moves to follow up when hitting Nair, say you hit a spaced Nair, so it's too far away for a jab, or say the opponent is at a higher percent, so the move just won't reach, it's important to get used to the input to hit them, jab, or land, dash. So you input forward basically as soon as you hit the ground and then hold that input. And then after running for a little while, you do your move. So hit them, land, buffer a dash. And then if you want to dash cancel into a move besides up smash, up B, or dash attack, you release the joystick and then you input the attack. If the opponent is close enough, you can skip the dash step and just hit them, land, and hold attack to buffer the attack. The opponent is considered to have low knockback up until around 25 if they're midweight. But much higher than that, or even not much higher than that, the opponent will have smoke when they get hit and they'll go a little bit farther and they'll have to tech when they hit the ground unless they input something else. This means, in other words, that they have entered tumble when hit 
around 30 if they are mid-weight or higher. Below tumble percents, the opponent can't DI the attack, which means that follow-ups at this percent will be extremely consistent. There's nothing the opponent can do to change anything about where they get launched by the Nair and how you can follow up. But once tumble is introduced, the opponent will be able to DI. At higher percents, knockback will be greater. Here, you see the no DI knockback angle of Nair. It's coded to have a knockback angle of 55 degrees, diagonal. Therefore, it is very susceptible to DI by the opponent. Here, I'm going to set the Joker CPU to DI outwards. You can see it's much lower than where it was before, about three units from the ground. Now, if I set him to DI to the left, you can see instead, he will go much higher, almost five units from the ground and less distance horizontally. Because Zero Suit's Nair is diagonal, the opponent has a great amount of control over where they will go after getting hit at high percents. Here you can see a comparison between the highest possible angle Joker can get launched and the lowest possible angle Joker can get launched. As you can see, it's a very big difference. Therefore, if you want to follow up from Nair at high percents, it's important to be able to hit the Nair, land, and then dash forward as I described earlier, and then while you are landing and dashing forward, look at where the opponent went and prepare to react to whether they DI'd in, out, or somewhere in between. If they DI in, you will have to jump earlier and do a higher jump for your aerial follow-up. If they DI down, you'll have to dash further and may not be able to hit them with a full hop aerial. You may have to do a short hop aerial. Or you may still be able to hit them with a grounded follow-up. Now that I've shown you how to combo from Fort Air in general, I'd like to show you some specific combos that are more difficult but get used by high level zero suits all the time. The first one of these is Nair into Fort Air into a uh, fast fall into a jab. So you can see it registers as true here, six hits, 28.9% uh, when all the moves are fresh. So that's a quick 29 and it hit the opponent very far to the side. So if I'm trying to hit an opponent off stage, maybe I'm fighting a Cloud or a Little Mac and I'm trying to get an early edge guard situation that might lead to a kill, this is the combo that I'm going for. So how do you perform it? Well, you want to hit the Nair close. A spaced Nair will lead to trouble, and I'll talk more about that later. But you want to hit the spaced Nair. You can see I hit him, I land, and then since I'm so close, I can just hold forward, jump, and attack to buffer that short hop forward air. Uh, no need to make it any harder than it needs to be. So there it is, one, two. And then after the forward air, I'm going to start holding down so that I can buffer a fast fall uh, hit the ground as soon as I can and then I'm just gonna start holding the input for whatever attack I'm gonna do. Here I choose to do jab because I know that it's a true combo, it's fast and it'll keep hitting him to the side. You can also do up tilt if your execution is great. At higher percents you might be able to do a forward air or uh, I've seen people do up smash after this but I don't think that's ever actually a true combo. Uh, so floaties are much easier to do this on uh, characters with mid fall speeds or fast fall speeds will be harder to do this on because they will return to the ground faster after uh, getting hit by the Nair. So against those characters, you want to make sure that your Nair execution is on point. And uh, even in some cases, if your Nair execution is great, sometimes the, the forward air just goes way over their head. So be careful about using this on fast fallers. Against all other characters, this is a safe tool to use. But it's only safe if you do a close Nair. If you do a spaced Nair, then it becomes almost impossible, uh, sometimes actually impossible, to catch up to them, to close the distance, and then short hop forward air before they get too far away or before they return to the ground. 
So you can see there, I did a space snare and he was too far away for me. He returned to the ground and ducked under my forwarder before I could reach him. Now it doesn't have to be right up in his face. It can be like middle spacing, but in that case, you might want to buffer a dash first and then go into your short hop forward air uh, just to make sure that he's not too far away. And then uh, the, the fast fall is also pretty strict. If you can buffer the fast fall, then I'll power to you. If you can't, then it may be difficult to get this to register as actually true on a fast faller. You shouldn't have any problem with it on floaties. The next combo is one that is useful for comboing vertically as opposed to horizontally like the last one. This one uh, is Nair, Land, Dash, Up Smash. Uh, if you hit the Nair extremely close then the Dash may be unnecessary, but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to show you the Dash. Into Up Smash, uh, if you do have to Dash, like from a, a spaced Nair or a Nair that isn't extremely close. Um, all you have to do is input the forward, and then as soon as the input happens, if you have smash stick, you can flick the C-stick up, or if you don't, then you can quarter circle the stick from the side to up uh, quickly, and then push A to cancel the dash into an up smash. That step may be tricky for or players who aren't used to that kind of input, but it's very useful to get used to, so I'd recommend practicing it. Anyway, Nair into up smash, and then uh, wait for the up smash finisher to happen. If you want to do an up air, which is the easier one, and also more reliable based on uh, you know wh whether they go left or right, you, all you have to do is hold jump, and then you can start holding in their direction, and then once you get closer to them, you input up an A to do the up air. That does about 30, close to the same amount of damage as the other combo but you can get more. Uh, so if you can anticipate what side of the up smash they're going to pop out on, say uh, the opponent is holding right, like the Joker CPU is now doing, uh, then it becomes pretty obvious that he's going to pop out on the right side because he's on the right side of the up smash. If the opponent is holding left, then they can pop out in, on the left side of uh, up smash and go diagonally up into the left instead of up into the right. Uh, here I'll put a graphic on the screen comparing what it looks like when you have an opponent that holds right during up smash versus an opponent that holds left during up smash. But right now uh, this Joker CPU is holding right and he's on the right side of up smash so I'm confident he's going to go to the right. If I want to do a forward air, I can't just do a full hop into the aerial. I have to, yes, do the full hop. So I'm going to hold jump to buffer the full hop. Uh, but then I'm going to let go after leaving the ground, let go of the jump input. And then I'm going to input it again to get a early double jump. I'm going to double jump as close to the ground as I can to get a little bit extra height, a little bit extra side movement while I'm holding towards the opponent. And then I input the forward air. Uh, and you can see it true comboed and I got 7% uh, more roughly. So a good increase in damage. And if there's a platform nearby that I can hit him onto, I can fast fall and then continue the pressure. If he goes to the left, then you can input a back air instead. As you can see here, it's mostly the same thing. You still do the full hop, you still do the instant double jump, but this time you're just holding back and uh, hitting a back air instead. Uh, there is one more note that I want to give on this combo, and that is that it does not actually give frame advantage sometimes. So you can input Nair uh, up smash, and then if you combo it into a forward air, uh, the opponent's air dodge will actually start before yours if you both buffer uh, air dodge. So I'm going to hold down so that I fast fall. I'm going to hold air dodge, and the opponent is also going to buffer air dodge. And you can see uh, his actually starts before mine. So this combo is not... It won't lead into anything else. If the opponent mashes an attack and you mash an attack, then unless uh, their attack is just slower than yours, you can get hit by them. So when you do this combo, I recommend doing the up smash into uh, the up the forward air or the back air, and then hold backwards after the forward air or forwards after the back air. You hold away from the opponent so that you increase the distance between them. Uh, 
so that if they mash a button, you don't get hit. But sometimes you may want to still hold, to hold towards them. Maybe they're the type of character that doesn't have a good aerial to mash. Uh, maybe you read them to double jump out and you want to punish that. Uh, you may want to hold forwards anyway, but just be careful and be aware that if you get mashed on, uh, you can get hit out of this combo. So if you do this, you'll maintain your distance. If you fast fall, you'll reach the ground at least close to the time that they do, and you can keep up the pressure. I also want to mention that even though up air does less damage, if you hit up air when there's a platform nearby, you can fast fall onto the platform and then you may be able to continue the pressure. I don't think you're going to be able to get any true combos out of it, but uh, it's still close to when they will be able to air dodge. So if they don't air dodge, then you may be able to hit them with another up air. If you do, if they do air dodge, then you can chase that. And it's still a good situation in general for continuing to push your advantage. So if there's a low platform nearby or uh, maybe a high platform that you can still land on with a full hop, going for the full hop up air may still be the best choice. It'll be up to you to decide in the moment. No video talking about Zero Suits and Air Combos would be complete without mentioning Nair and Confliction Kick, one of her earliest and most consistent kill combos across the cast. Uh, it's strong even if it doesn't kill it does 26 percent uh, it has a good window usually about 20 percent where you're just guaranteed to get it um, rage can make it work very early uh, but it can be difficult to get the spike consistently uh, and that's what i want to talk about because uh, the execution of the move at the most basic level is not hard you hit them you land you hold down b and then you hold forward and you, you hold A. That's all you need to do to hit a CPU that doesn't DI, but DI changes the combo tremendously. So uh, let's say, for example, the opponent starts holding in or DIs the Nair inwards. Uh, if you hit an unspaced Nair and they DI in, then they are so close that it is nearly impossible to get the spike on flip jump without very specific execution that is almost impossible to do on reaction. Uh, that execution is to hit them, land, down B, and then as soon as possible, uh, you wanna start holding back. If you do it too early, then you'll B reverse the flip jump and you'll lose the opportunity for combo. If you do it too late, then you won't be able to spike them. Uh, you want to hold back as soon as possible, kick inwards, so you're gonna continue holding in when you push a you're going to start the kick inwards and then switch to holding out so you're going to input basically a b reverse for the kick uh, and even if you execute it correctly you m still might not get the the spike that's how difficult this is so uh once again you start your down b as soon as possible and you start holding in as soon as possible kick while holding inwards and then switch to out uh, and then you might get the kick in this situation. Um, if you want to avoid that difficult execution, it's a lot easier to start uh, the flip jump kick from a spaced nair. So fully spaced nair, now there's more distance between us at the start of the flip jump, so I don't have to hold in as strictly or I don't have to do the B reverse kick. So uh, if you hit a spaced nair and they DI in, all you have to do is wait until you get to the top and then start holding out. So you flip jump, you start holding in, and then you start holding out at the top when you begin the kick. Uh, and then you should get the spike uh, more times than not. Uh, it's still not like perfectly consistent, but at least you will consistently hit them with flip jump kick, even if it's with uh, the sour spot. So uh, that's how you deal with an opponent that DIs Nair inwards. Uh, you're basically guaranteed to hit them with the sour spot as long as you're within the window. Uh, if you want to get the spike, then it's more difficult. Uh, whereas if you uh, have an opponent that DIs out, then messing up means you might not hit them at all. Uh, so if I switch his DI to be outwards, you can see that the angle of launch is much lower and much farther horizontally. So uh, this means that if you hit a spaced nair, the distance between you two horizontally 
will be so great that you cannot just kick as soon as possible. You will be too far away from them. Uh, and if they're a fast faller, you might be too far away from them vertically as well. So you'll have to wait a few frames for the flip jump to fall a little bit. Uh, here in this case, I'm going to flip as soon as possible and then start holding forward as soon as possible. So I'll wait for the flip jump to happen and then start holding forward. If you start holding forward too early, then you'll probably buffer a side B, which is a really common problem for a lot of people. So down B and then hold forward. And then I'm going to wait until I'm after the top of the flip a little bit. And then I'm going to start my kick. And then I'm barely going to hit him during the start of his air dodge. So it wasn't even a true combo. I hit him during the start of his air dodge because his body shifted towards me a little bit during that animation. If he didn't air dodge, I might not have even hit him at all, and that's how difficult it is to hit somebody who DIs away from a spaced nair. Uh, the window for it is very small. It's especially small versus fast fallers. Uh, so you want to, in this case, aim for a close nair. So if you think the opponent DIs in, you want to aim for a, a spaced nair. If you think the opponent DIs out, you want to aim for a close nair. So here you can see uh, if he dies out, he's going at that lower, more horizontal angle. I can do my flip jump as soon as possible, start holding forward, and I can even just hold A to kick as soon as possible, and it'll spike consistently. So uh, it works at 50, it works at 40, uh, it'll work at probably at 70, let me see, 68. Yeah, and I'm getting the kick every time. So. Uh, a close nair versus opponent that DIs away is a consistent way to get the kick, but if you space an air versus opponent that DIs away, it can miss. Uh, if you have an opponent that DIs in, a close nair will result in making it almost impossible to get the spike, uh, but a spaced nair versus an opponent that DIs in will make it easier to get the spike, but at least you're still guaranteed to at least hit the sour spot. Uh, so that concludes what I want to talk about for Nair Flip Jump Kick in this video. Uh, there will be more details in my video in the future about Nair Flip Jump Kick specifically. Uh, so I hope you'll look forward to that if you still have trouble with the combo after the, watching this video. Nair into Flip Jump Kick is great for an early kill if you hit the opponent with a Nair when they are near the ledge. But what if you hit them with the Nair or you have an opportunity to punish the opponent when you're in the middle of the stage and you don't have any up airs to hit them onto or any platforms to hit them onto with up air? Well, the answer is to hit them with Nair into another combo starter. The first Nair hits them a little bit to the side and then you can follow up with an up air or a second Nair. So I'm going to talk about these two combo extensions as combo routes. So it's not going to be a specific combo, it's going to be a set of options for you to consider. Nair into up air is a combo tree that is uh, very affected by DI, but still very powerful. Uh, regardless of DI, it will lead to a lot of damage, and if there are platforms nearby, it will lead to even more damage and kill potential. So. As you can see here, uh, I have him DIing to the right. All I have to do to get the Nair into up air, that first Nair into up air is hit him, land, buffer that dash for a few frames, do that short hop up air. You can see it barely nicks him, but he's DIing out, so that's to be expected. And then I can, you know, double jump up air from there. Uh, I don't really want to go for a boost kick because it won't be a true combo. Uh, since there are no platforms around, but I can do that. I can choose instead of doing a double jump up air to buffer a fast fall into a full hop up air. Do I mess up the full hop up air? But let's see here. And I can even get it up to three up airs uh, before I will miss. But if I think he's mashing air dodge or maybe he doesn't have a double jump, uh, I can catch him during the startup of his air dodge. For even more damage uh, and then if I have him di to the right uh, to the left I mean let's see di shield left 
if he DIs to the left, then I still have the same options as before. Um, but I can't dash as far forward. So I have to be ready to react to his DI and stop myself from dashing as far uh, if I see that he DIs in. Uh, or if I hit with a space nair, then that just becomes much easier. I still have time to dash, uh, but now I have more time to react. Uh, but now that he's DIing in, he gains more height, so I can actually just go for a full hop up air. Uh, and actually here I could get a third up air uh, if I do not mess up. I can get a third up air. Uh, and a boost kick would also be very close to being true, like you saw before. Uh, and you can even like do a delayed landing up air. So there's plenty of potential to start a full ladder here, or just to hit somebody onto a platform where you want to hit them with uh, another kind of combo that involves a platform reset. It's a very strong uh, combo tree that works regardless of DI, as long as you're able to react to the DI. So it's definitely something to practice if you're comfortable with ladder combos and comboing with Nair. You can see, uh, especially if you combo uh, on Kalos, for example, you can hit them with a Nair, uh, chase them into an up air, and then use that platform at the ledge to lead into a ladder that can take them close to the corner of the stage where there's uh, a huge amount of kill potential or just a lot of damage. Uh, and this is also true on like Pokemon Stadium, Yoshi's, uh, Town and City, anywhere where there's a platform for you to reset off of, especially one that's near the ledge, this is a powerful option. Like Nair up air, Nair into Nair is extremely powerful, but also extremely DI dependent. Um, so the strength of Nair into Nair as opposed to Nair into up air is that Nair into Nair is good for quickly carrying the opponent to the side. Um, whereas Nair into up air was great for comboing off of platforms, Nair into Nair is good for taking the opponent across the stage. Maybe if you hit them uh, facing the wrong direction or you hit them in the middle of a wide stage and you need to get them closer to the ledge, Nair into Nair is the way to go. Um, but like I said, it's very susceptible to DI. If the CPU DI's inwards, you can see he gains a lot of height, but doesn't really go very far to the side at all. Um, I can get two nares, but then really I I can only get like maybe a, I don't even think that was true. Uh, I could get maybe a boost kick, but usually it's going to be some up airs that don't link together too well unless there's a high platform there for me to get onto. Um, if he DIs out, however, uh, he doesn't gain very much height, so I can keep doing it, and it covers a lot of stage. So you can see we're starting at like negative five. I can take him all the way to around seven or eight units. So look at how much distance that is. Uh, before he could air dodge and actually if I do it well, uh, I think my record is like five nares in a row But as you've probably noticed uh, It's not registering as true and that is because it isn't uh, I'm hitting him during the startup of his air dodge every time So a character with a two frame air dodge will be harder to do this to and a character with a one frame out will be able to use that one frame out uh, fortunately if they are able to air dodge it, then Nair has less landing lag, so you can chase that. Um, if he directionally air dodges out, then you can chase them there. If they neutral air dodge, then uh, whether they go into attack or they just land, you can also chase that. Um, but if neither of those things happen, maybe they like mash jump and they get caught, or their air dodge is too slow, then you can actually just take them uh, across the stage. Um, and rack up a ridiculous amount of damage and then even after two or three nares you can get a true follow-up afterwards like you can see i just did there three nares into a true flip jump kick that spiked uh so this combo is definitely great for carrying uh combo food characters across the stage or uh teaching the opponent that they should be trying to mash air dodge when you hit them with nair which you can punish in other ways 
Um, the main weakness of uh, going for multiple nares here is that they can just DI in, uh, and a lot of people will DI in by default. But uh, if the opponent is the type to DI out, then you can still get maybe two nares before they realize, oh, I should be DIing this up so that he can't keep doing this to me, at which point you can just convert into uh, an up air. And actually, if you get enough nares on the opponent, you can just convert it into an air uh, or an up air anyway, uh, just because they start slowly building height over the multiple nares. Uh, this is a, a combo tree that is sorely uh, unexplored so far. Uh, I really only discovered that you could get more than two nares in a row very recently. So counterplay is uh, something that we haven't studied too much, but we do know that it's very difficult to get it to actually be a true combo. So one frame outs are something to worry about. Two frame air dodges might be something to worry about, but like I said, uh, we should be able to cover those. Double jumps are something we can chase with up airs, or if we teach them to double jump after a nair, then that just means easier up air combos afterwards, or maybe a uh, nair into flip jump kick spike afterwards because now they're trying to jump out of it, so uh, the nair is easier to hit. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you were able to learn a lot from it. Uh, even if you were an old player, I think uh, there's probably some stuff in there that you might not have known. So, once again, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for my next video, leave them in the comments. And uh, if anything was unclear, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them uh, either here or in the Zero Suit Samus Discord that I run. Uh, the community is very friendly and very helpful. Uh, so if you have any questions or you want to learn more about Zero Suit, that's the place I would recommend to go first. Uh, so yeah, check out the description. Uh, it'll be right down there and we'll be happy to see you inside.